In this video, I will explain how to create an incidence matrix for a graph. So let's imagine that we have this graph right here. I've labeled the vertices of the graph A, B, C, D, and E. I've also labeled the edges 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, and 6. Now, in its current form, this diagram is a nice way to visualize the graph, and it's easy to see how the different vertices and edges relate to each other, but sometimes we want to represent a graph using only numbers, or sometimes we might want to store it in a database. So one way to do that is to create something known as an incidence matrix. So to create this type of matrix, we can write the names of the vertices along the rows right here, and then we can write the names of the edges in the graph along the columns. Now what we're going to do is fill in the values of this matrix with zeros and ones to indicate which vertices and which edges are incident with each other, or in other words, are connected to each other. So if we consider this first row here, let's consider vertex A. Let's first consider edge one. In the graph, is A incident with edge one? Or in other words, is A an endpoint of edge one? Well, we can see that yes, it is. A is incident with edge one right here. So we're going to give this box a one within the matrix. Then we move on to edge number two. So we'll say, is vertex A incident with edge two? And we can see that indeed it is in the graph. Edge two is connected to vertex A. So in this box, we're also going to write a one. And then we continue on to edge three. So is vertex A incident with edge three? We can see that it is not. So vertex A is not incident to edge three, or in other words, it's not connected to edge three. So we'll put a zero right here in this box. And then we'll ask, is vertex A incident with edge four? If we look at our graph, we can see that it is not, edge four is not connected to vertex A. So we'll give this box a zero, and then we'll move on to edge five. Is it incident with vertex A? We can see that it is not, so we'll give that a zero. And then lastly, is edge six incident with vertex A? It is also not, so we'll also give it a zero. And we're just going to repeat this process with the remaining vertices and fill in the rest of this matrix. So here is what the incidence matrix looks like when we fill out all of the remaining rows. Now, an incidence matrix has a couple interesting properties. The first is that the sum of the values in each row is the degree of that vertex. So for example, if we consider this first row right here, this is vertex A. If we take the sum of the values in this row, we find that the sum is two, and that is the degree of vertex A. So remember, the degree is just the number of edges that are touching vertex A. So we, we can see that indeed there are two edges that are touching vertex A or that are incident with vertex A. So the degree of vertex A is two. And similarly, if we look at vertex B, if we take the sum of the values in that row, that sum turns out to be three, which is the degree of vertex B. So if we look at vertex B, we can see that there are three edges in the graph that are incident to it. So it has a degree of three. Now, the other property about an incidence matrix that's worth knowing is that the sum of the values in each column must be two, assuming we're talking about a simple graph that has no loops. So if we look at each of the columns in our incidence matrix and we take the sum of the values in each column, we'll find that the sum is two for every single column. And the reason for that is because remember, a column just represents an edge. So for example, this first column represents edge one. So when we have edge number one right here in the graph, it's only possible that it has two endpoints or two vertices that it's incident with. So it must have a sum of two. In other words, it must be touching exactly two of these vertices within the matrix. And the same is true of every column. So every column just represents an edge. So the sum of the number of vertices that each edge is incident with must be two. So that was just a quick example of how to create an incidence matrix for a graph.